Uh, let me get back to uh, two of the, the uh, more interesting that uh, uh, Gene and Robert and Robert and Gene Hollander from that. That's it, yes. Now, the um, thing about them is that they have uh, collaborated on uh, a, the work of translation, and uh, he has uh, the point he provided the academic background and uh, the study of it. And uh, uh, Jean, uh, his wife, was uh, supplied the poetry. Uh, and in fact, uh, she has a very delicate ear indeed. And uh, I'll give you an example. She says in one of her, her articles she's written on the subject the Italian word <coughs> fiamma opens up at the end like a flaming fire indeed, while our English flame, although incognate, closes on itself with an M word as if it were dying out. Well, uh, if you're going to concentrate on each syllable of a uh, word, you're probably never going to get through the translation. But there, they, and I wonder why it weren't more other than the wife team. Perhaps it's because uh, there's no need to see too many arguments. Um, and now, his, uh, I want to mention this uh, poet, W.S. Merwin, is, uh, is one that he's written. Uh, Merwin is, uh, yeah, because um, he, um, uh, he is a poet. And that is an is a important, important point. Some of his others are scholars and reputable scholars indeed, but not really poets uh, who can bring the, the full power of their uh, art to uh, the, the work. And, but he, he preferred to do the, the Proletorium, not to he hasn't attempted the others. Um, now, uh, the next lecture should be uh, Kieran Carson. Yes. Now, the thing about uh, Kieran Carson is that he um, freely admits this is something that's happening a little bit more often uh, nowadays in uh, translation. Most people recognize it's impossible. They say, well, uh, he admits to being almost completely unfamiliar with Italian, with the Italian language. Uh, when, and then he says, when I began reading the Inferno in translation, I would say, Sorry, no. uh, he didn't stop him. He read in Boccaccio that Dante took the greatest delight in music and song. And so Carson was uh, uh, inspired by that to use the assistance of 18th century Irish ballad makers uh, in, his, in his version. And so it's a little bit less reliable or a perfect translation, but it is uh, it has an interesting aspect to it. Um, yeah, then uh, Michael Palma, he is an Italian, uh, Palma, and I um, know uh, that seems to be <laughs> uh, uh, well, let's see. So, uh, Well, you know, sort of for, uh, you know. Well, it doesn't matter so much. Anyway, uh, J.G. Nichols is, is one of the ones that I would take about. Um, managed to squeeze his version in in uh, 2004, 2005, and makes a point rarely made about uh, Dante. He said that after 700 years, Dante, the Commedia, is a shocking poem. There's another point that's often made. He says the physical torment of the damned uh, 
is so horrific, reminds him of some ferocious girl he know. Well, of course, today may be more appropriate to mention Abu Ghraib, uh, or but that will be a subject perhaps for another Sarah. We're going to have to get into that. Well, into that. Um, we have uh, Kirk Patrick. Um, Robin Kirk Patrick, I hope. Uh, so that, that is. Uh, on the 100, no, the 102nd page of his meticulous introduction to his Dante translation, Robin uh, Kirk Patrick asks the pertinent question. Is translation translation really possible? <coughs> Who would have be asking that? But uh, he answers it with emphatic no. But there's no reason not to try. He says rather apologetically. Um, and let me see. Uh, Show Brian around, yes, but he was one of the most we said about him. He uh, came out the same year as Kurt Patch and still got lost in a shuffle. All this innovation of Dante studies. Uh, and uh, Burton Rayfield, uh, uh, he came out with a big, big book. Yeah, that, that's it. It's all about down at the bottom somewhere there. Uh, I've lost track of it. Uh, he thought he would have the definitive edition at all last. But uh, it is not quite. Ah, yes. Now, now we have come to uh, Mary Jo Bang. Well, yeah, thank you. One of the few women uh, who has tried it. And uh, she, this is uh, just last year, just last year. And uh, now I'll show you what she has done. Uh, as more and more uh, people do uh, try to do it, don't they, without really knowing Italian, and they will not even bother to know Italian that well, um, she decides that she's going to break all the sacrosanct rules and regulations about meter and, and uh, rhyme and whatnot. And uh, so everybody knows the opening lines of. The opening lines of the poem. So uh, you can now use, you can now compare her version. Stopped, big motion in the middle of what we call our life. I looked up and saw no sky, only a dense cage of leaf, tree, and tree. I was lost. Uh, Definitely was lost in this. Dense tree. I don't know how they got in there. Anyway, she, she has a lot of time. She's, she's, she's been losing herself. She's not to buy a book if you want to. As said, it's a good deal of stretching. Um, but, um, just, oh, yes, she puts into it. Um, sort of, uh, Freud, Freud gets, gets stuck in there, I don't know where he is exactly, and Susan Sontag, uh, all kind of being a point at Dante's expense. And now, for 2013, they're still coming, uh, looking forward to next year, Clive uh, <laughs> James has produced the book. Now, Clive James is a uh, a popular uh, writer, uh, he's sometimes a personality, a television personality, and, uh, but he had the good fortune to marry an Italian, and uh, his wife helped him all along. But uh, one thing she could not be held responsible for was his decision uh, to do something that no one has ever done before. We haven't mentioned footnotes, but footnotes are the bane of many, many people's existence. They get very tired of footnotes. So, what did James decide to do? But to incorporate just brief little hints and uh, footnotes into Dante's own text. 
and putting words into Dante's mouth. And she had, it was really quite, quite uh, appalling. Uh, if it hadn't been for that, I think you would have gotten pretty good reviews for, for a version that was quite uh, racy and uh, well paced. And, but uh, certainly the critics uh, not forgiven for that. Well, now we've uh, come to the end of my uh, stack of books. Where well, makes it woo? Now, just to tell you that uh, what you can do finally with uh, Dante this evening. This is, what does it look like on the screen? So they're, they're copied from the inspired by the drawings of uh, uh, Doré, who uh, wrote some of the most famous, uh, <coughs> of the most famous. Uh, well, so maybe this is the point for me to ask the question, because the, the, the main point which we originally began with, the uh, question is still why, I mean, still, going on publishing the books of this. And spending years and years, I think, to do any kind of a job like this is uh, back from the work. So the only answer possible is because they can't get it right. <laughs> or uh, they, keep, they keep assuming the other guy can't get it right. Uh, I, I, I'll do my version. See a great improvement over the last. But there's always something wrong with it. So one of the one of the one of the trying to do it's it's like uh, Everest, I suppose it's quite kind of the fact is if you keep trying you can get to the top of the Everest, but you can't get to the top of uh, you can't get to the end of the translating and it. And in fact I imagine that I could see somehow all of these people who finally published the book, had it printed and published, and on the night before it, he was in bed. Just the right word that in that context. And then he was like, it's too late, it's too late. I have to wait for the next edition. Well, it's a bad idea. Well, the grand finale, let us end. This <laughs> and it really is uh, delightful. And, and 
uh, here I think they have uh, really uh, it's really respectful. There's a, a, a form of, uh, there's still this kind of line, the bone lies from this set, all my feet are always a pressure, I can only be the teacher of how to kick up the fajo. But it's partly because uh, I think that this is one more picture that it shows it. Uh, Ah, that, uh, look at that. Yeah. That has done the top and the tiny 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 the, the spirit of, uh, of Dante is a term to take it very, very seriously, very, very, and uh, go into it, into the notes and study St. Augustine at the same time, St. Thomas Aquinas and all that, and fine, enjoy yourself. But uh, the, uh, he's an English translation, a fascination for translators, and for collectors. Cercando di 